Steve Jones with the Hardscape Channel here. Glad to have uh, Bill Schneider staying with us for another interview. Bill, um, you had in the previous interview you had talked about that uh, moment that really changed your company, and you talked about how that uh, bringing that financial consultant in really made the changes or made you focus on those things that are important to growth of a, of a young company. Right. So could you share with the uh, viewers what? Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's one of one of the key factors is is. The industry doesn't understand, and especially the commercial industry, not the residential. It's two different things. And when you are doing commercial work, think of all the equipment you need to have and how expensive it is. And if you don't know how to manage your your company and understand how much money you're spending and how much money you have to make when you do a job, you will not survive. And being the low bidder or underbidding somebody else just means that you're not going to survive long term. Bill, isn't it true though? Would you have, maybe you disagree with me on this, but I, I I can't believe that there's any contractor out there today that would ever knowingly do a job for a loss. So in my mind, that means that that those companies that do bid too low don't have a good handle on their expenses and overhead to understand what it's always supposed to be all your costs plus a little bit of profit. And if you don't if, if you do that without knowing all of your costs, you're guaranteed to self destruct. Yeah. So it's all about tracking costs. It well, it's about knowing how much money and how much time it's gonna take you to do a job. And then you have all the overhead in your company plus your equipment and all that stuff. And that's what it's all about. It's when you estimate a job, you need to know all of that information so you know what to charge. But you would be surprised at the number of people that underbid us on jobs on a regular basis just because they want the job and they can't even do it at the level that we do it at or at the time we do it at, nor that they do have the equipment we have or anything. How could they be cheaper than us? Guess what? Probably half of them every year end up going broke. Well. And uh, that doesn't do the industry any good because nope. typically the job suffers. The prices, the expectation for prices, are are lower because they've actually found people willing to do stuff f for less than it should be going for. Right now, it, it's true. I mean, your comp I know your company quite well, and you have higher overhead than many companies. Yes. But you more than make up for it in the efficiencies of the speed and quality of the work that you do. Yes. Uh, is, is there any way for a contractor to I improve his efficiencies? Yes. I mean, one, one of the key factors is, is everybody talks about ICPI certification. Um, you can't learn how to do things right and do things well and even install properly by talking. You have to get involved in being trained or training your people with hands-on training not with talking to them or showing them pictures or anything like that. And that's the whole reason Steve's school is the best thing there is, is because they teach you all the presentation stuff that you get at the ICPI only better. And the real key factor is when you go to his school, you are trained on how to do things properly, quickly, and efficiently, and how to do a good job. One of the biggest problems we face when we get underbid People that do the job and do it poorly ends up being that the owner or the city or whatever will say, we're not using pavers anymore because they don't work. And the real problem wasn't the pavers don't work, it's who did the job and how they did it. That's the problem. Well, to, to bring us back on point, the real issue is, is getting a handle on your expenses, your costs, and, tr and being able to track the, uh, the, the time, the, the okay. components of time of labor for each activity on a job site and unfortunately and I'm, I'm, I'm guiltier than most when I was a contractor I, I really 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 failed at learning that it wasn't until much later on that I learned that I literally had to know what those numbers meant well I, I think the real thing that I, I'm and I'm trying to get ICPI to move in this direction now people that do residential work are different than people that do commercial work and if you're doing commercial work you do that separately and when I started this business I was doing commercial got residential work and after just doing three residential jobs I created a separate company with separate people 
to do residential because it's completely different. Yes, I wasn't paying union wages. Yes, it was cheaper, but it's all about how to do a job and do it well. Well, those are some great, uh, great tips for the for the contractors out there. I, um, in a minute, I'm going to talk to you some more about uh, you know specific education issues. I want everybody to understand that Bill here has mentored just about every successful contractor in the country. Uh, there's some that haven't had his help, but uh, um, they probably struggled a lot harder than they than they needed to. So, Bill, thank you so much thank for you. all you've Appreciate done for everything. the industry. <laughs> you, <laughs> you did it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. This is the Hardscape Channel signing off.